Real quick before we jump into this video, and yes, my shed door blew off in the storm. I want to let you guys know we are continuing to honor our 10 years in business at Work Forward Apparel and continuing to give back to you guys. So we're going to be giving away five pre-powder coated hitch covers over the span of the entire month. So any order placed this month is automatically going to enter you guys into winning. Again, five random orders are going to get a free hitch cover thrown in. I mean, that's a hundred and something dollar value. That's pretty good. So head on over to WorkForwardApparel.com right now, place an order, and you never know, you might just have a hitch cover show up at your door. Let's roll to this video. What's up and good morning guys, welcome back to another video. As you guys have probably heard on the news, uh, it is raining like crazy out here in California. Me and Chris actually missed probably the biggest rainstorm. I believe they said it was the fourth rainiest day they've ever had since they've been recording rain. Me and Chris were unfortunately in Scottsdale at Barry Jackson. I mean, fortunately because that was really cool, but also like, I like crazy torrential storms. Like I feel like there's something kind of cool about that as well. Since the last couple of rainstorms though, I have got a ton of you guys commenting, sending me messages, um, best wishes on being safe out here during the storms. And I kind of want to show you guys how the property is actually handling some of the storms. So prior to us leaving Arizona, we really did nothing to prepare the property for that storm because nobody knew it was coming in that hard. But since then I've done a bunch of cleaning. So we'll go down the side of the driveway here. We'll show you guys. You can see the river that flows down the driveway. You can see that river flowing there. There's another one there. So the high side of the property is over there and then it works its way down to the lower side. Where we lucked out is the house is kind of in the middle. So basically any water coming down from the high side bypasses the house and shoots down to the lower side of the property. Unless we get like the craziest, you know, hell freezing over storm of storms, the house is always gonna be okay. So don't ever worry about that, guys. The front entrance of the property, this guy, you guys know, we've done many of videos on the front entrance and that is the the like one critical choke point that really ties up our entire drainage system I cleaned that out before the storm we had last weekend I have not cleaned it out before today and today I think is actually supposed to be a lot more rain we're gonna go check on it right now but it's one of those things like once it's raining like it is right now there's nothing you can do to clear it out you just have to wait until the storm passes and then address it again you'll see there's a bunch of little finger streams that come in all to this point of the driveway and it exponentially grows as we get closer to the end because you have all these little streams combining into one river so you can see we're getting bigger there. We're about three foot wide or so of river. And I've dug a couple of really deep like sediment ponds because as you can see, when everything comes down from the mountains over there, there's still not the vegetation that used to be there after the fires came through. We still got years before all that grows back. So it carries all of this sand with it. There's a ton of sediment and sand. All of this you see all the way down here was probably about a foot or so deep of sand that carried off of those mountains and then settled right here. I mean, I've scraped a ton of it out and just kind of piled it up there. There's some piles of it over there. I mean, it's really good sand. You need some sand for some stuff. But once that stuff dries up, especially inside of drainage pipes, it gets like super thick and well compacted and it's a pain in the butt to get out. And then we've got the front. Now, if you guys harken back, there is a six inch to six to eight inch drainage pipe that runs from there underneath this existing stone driveway. From there, we tied it into a big 12 inch culvert pipe that runs underneath the new driveway. Well, obviously the choke point is the skinny one over here. And that's where all that sediment, anything that washes off the property all comes to this corner. So you can see I've piled up a ton of boulders. I've dug a big sediment pond right there because we also have all the water that comes from like the street that way. And those properties washes its way down this way. I mean, it's just, an insane amount of water that hits that little eight inch pipe. It's not ideal. Eventually we're gonna cut that out and make it 12 inches all the way underneath, but for now we're just making do. And it actually looks like that's draining. Eventually that's gonna get clogged up. It'll start to build up. It'll knock a hole in my dam that I built right here and then we'll get a bunch of ruts that go underneath the driveway. Really that's the only thing we've had to fix over the last like year and a half, two years since we've got all of the drainage on the property pretty dialed, so it's not that bad. All of my vehicles make it over pretty well. I just feel bad for our tenants because they have, uh, one of their vehicles is a smaller BMW, which is not ideal for crossing big ruts. Here is the other end of that drainage pipe. That's the 12 inch culvert, which you can see, I mean, there's a really, really good amount of water flowing out of it. So, albeit we do have a choke point over there, it's still flowing a pretty good amount of water. Now, let's carry down to this part of the property. This is where we put a lot of work in bringing in a bunch of broken up concrete and broken asphalt because this ended up being like a three to four foot deep ditch. Every time it rained, it just erodes more and more and more. And that had to stop because it was getting dangerous. Uh, it was starting to widen out into the road, which we don't want. So thanks to James and having a bunch of broken concrete over on his property, we trucked a bunch of it over here and put it in the ditch and then we covered it with dirt. Well, it's not so much covered with dirt anymore. Let's show you that. Now I will say, if you guys are thinking about ordering a tractor or buying a tractor, get one with a cab because this thing is nice for going around on days like this and I don't want to beat the vehicles up. Uh, mud bogging or anything like that. Obviously it doesn't have tracks. So it's got limitations, but this thing will go pretty much anywhere with four wheel drive. Uh, so as we come down and show you out this window, well, I guess you can see pretty decently, but the, the water 
water spots make it a little hard to see out this window. Um, you can see we are exposing all of the concrete, but we're only about like that deep now. So uh, I believe it will no longer go below where the actual concrete level is. So. Uh, yes, we'll still have to repair this area a little bit, throw some dirt up on top of it, but we're not having to bring in four feet of dirt to try to fill these trenches back up every single rainy season. And the good news is this is way off the road. And I think with all the little channels it's gonna make it between the concrete pieces, it's gonna stay off the road. A couple things I did last weekend when it was raining was, you can see it coming down the center of the road right here. A lot of water likes to go down the center of the road and it was carrying like all the way down the center, all the way up to there and causing more damage. So I kind of diverted it a little bit and got it to come off the road and go into my ditch. And then at some point back there, I'm gonna try to divert it way, way past because there's a little bit of a slope right here um, and it pretty, makes a pretty big cavern right there and I don't like that. So closer to my driveway, I'm actually gonna try to shoot it into my drainage swell before it actually affects this part of the road. This area right here was doing the same thing. You'll see there's a little bit of a uh, rut going down the center of the road, but I stopped that by diverting that water right over to there. But down here we have another big choke point. We'll take you down there and you guys can see this area gets uh, a hefty amount of water coming from two to three spots on the property, plus the road, plus the property behind me, down their side of the road. This area we have not put any concrete in and you can see how deep it's starting to get. And then it just opens up into this big flood plain. Now I'm not entirely sure who did it. This used to be one giant multi-thousand acre ranch and I'm assuming it was the owner then or maybe it was some of the other owners as they started to split these up into smaller ranches. But you can see all this water just coming right on through. And right about there where it crosses the road, there's a big drainage swell. There's a big lake area down there that it uh, floods into. But up in that area right there, they poured a big nice pad of concrete and it basically helps the water cross the road without rutting the road out completely because this is a very known area apparently for water to cross the road. You've got a lot of my property that drains right through there. I'll take you over there in a second. This is all the side of the road plus that side of the property. I mean, it's just a lot of water that comes in through here. But thankfully this area doesn't get too gnarly and it's very sandy. Again, you get all these deposits of all of this sandy type material so it makes it really nice to regrade out after the rain. We got us our own little mini waterfall over here. Again, this is where the concrete is. So there's underneath all of this sand, it's kind of hard to see, but from about, about where the tractor tire is, probably about 30 feet that way is one big little swell of concrete. And now you can see why. It just overtops right here. You guys remember a few rainstorms ago when we saw like James's property had that giant river running through it. All of the water from all the properties around here ends up running through this field and then there's again a big swampy lake down over there. Which apparently the story goes that was dug when the old timer that graded all the roads and stuff around here and the properties and the pads and all that, he dug a big pond back there that would fill with water and that's where he would get water for his water trucks to uh, build all these ponds and stuff like that. Pretty cool operation. But again, you can see there's a ton of water in it and it's actually stopped raining. It hasn't rained for the last like 10 minutes since we started filming, but this is just all the water still running its way off down here and out yonder. So back on my property, if we come up underneath this tree with these giant water drops hitting me, you can see there's a little ravine that runs right through there. And I've never actually checked that during a storm until last weekend and I was hoping there'd be like a bunch of water that comes through there and we'd have like a little river running through the property, but we really don't. So we have another one that runs through there, which will go on the property in a second, it runs out this way. Uh, you can see all of the sand like that. Just that pile of sand just appeared one day. Before we go explore around the property, just because we happen to be out on the road right now, I'm going to show you guys the condition of the road. Now, again, over the last couple of years that I've been here, I've come out here and like tried to make some provisions to get the water off the road. Uh, we dug a little hole right here, which allows the water again to stop pooling up right here. And honestly, that was our biggest problem was there was low lying spots on the road that you would get these giant puddles. And then the more people that drive through them, the deeper the hole gets. And then you just have a bigger and bigger problem over time. So my goal has always been just get the water off the road if we can. This area right here all does good. Uh, other than it kind of all pools to the center, I would like to get that to the edge. However, this is all very, very sandy. So even when it's like this, if you drove through here right now, you don't put big old ruts in it and like your car doesn't get too dirty. You get this sandy mix that washes up onto the car 
However, it's not mud. Here's another section of the road that uh, the last weekend was not draining so well. All of this water that was coming from here, you can see hopefully that that is uphill over there, all drains down the center of the road, and then it was continuing on over here. But right down here is a big uh, culvert pipe that runs underneath the road and runs out that way. The water wasn't getting over here. So in the middle of the rainstorm, this one I had to kind of do while it was wet. Uh, I just kind of lowered this section a little bit and tried to divert some of the water. And eventually once you get a little bit of the water to go, it opens up a nice path. I mean, you can see it actually tunneled under some of this dirt down there to where there's another big culvert pipe. You might be able to see just a little bit of the metal of it right there. Um, and obviously that drains all of this side of this property over here. There are a lot of this stuff was put in, I don't even know how many years ago, but they did a really good job out here of addressing drainage issues. But they did a really good job out here of addressing uh, drainage issues. So that culvert pipe leaks through right there. Uh, you can see there's some concrete culvert pipes. I don't know what that is. It looks like a helium tank right there. That's interesting. And then maybe you can see it. I don't want to go over there because I think there's poison oak and I don't know what that looks like. So I'm not even going to mess with it. Uh, but there's a big river running through there now. That's probably about 10 feet wide. You could probably just see just the top of it. There's a big berm right here that's blocking part of it from us. But that property is where all of the water eventually ends up. And this one was a smaller puddle issue, about another 100 or so feet up the road. That was the one that would be the giant puddle in the road. And uh, it took me a couple of rainstorms to finally get that one fixed and addressed to where we no longer have a big puddle there. Let's head that way. Uh-oh, guys, I see a puddle in the road. I don't like puddles. I'm gonna address this real quick. I don't have my head strap, so you're probably not gonna be able to watch this, but let me just, let me just kick this water here. You can see it slowly. It slowly got a little stream that heads to where I want it to head, but we can't, we can't be having big puddles like this just out in the middle of the road. This is where it's nice to have an angled box blade where I can pitch the blade whichever direction I want. So I'm pitching it right now this way, so it digs that away, and it'll end up getting the water kind of out of the road, uh, to the side of the road actually, and then it'll follow me to where we want it to drain. Now, obviously, with everything being so soupy, it's not going to be the prettiest alteration to the road, but I think we got it pretty good now. You can see I got my little, little carved out area here. And once the rain passes, I'll come in and like doctor all this up and feather that in a little bit. But I kind of like having that hard curb. Um, there's plenty of room for people to drive by over here. But I noticed that all of this section right here drains over to here as well into this puddle. So you can see now the puddle is slowly starting to go into that nice groove that I carved out. Uh, so this thing should end up completely draining out. And then down on this side, this is where we used to get, I mean, you can kind of see it if you look here, there was a big low lying section here. This would turn into an absolute lake and that was not fun to drive through. Again, it took me a while, but I finally got to where this thing never puddles up anymore and doesn't become a big old lake. So we've got all that water draining to here. There is a big old culvert pipe down that way. When I drug the dirt through here, it built up a little bit of a lip. So I just drove over it with the tractor. So eventually, that's gonna go that way. It's just gonna take a second for the water to find it. Definitely wearing the wrong shoes for this today. Coming over to here. Oh, whew, that stuff is, yeah, look at that. I just sunk. This is where that giant culvert pipe is. See a trend here, everything goes this way. Uh, leads over to here. I don't know if we're gonna even be able to see this thing. But yeah, it is a big old pipe right there. Oh, that's, that's another one next to it. But there's some big pipes that run through here. You can see that giant V that all the water has carved into uh, that side. And then over here, we just put another little relief. So anything coming this way that ends up on this side of the road goes out there. Now, if we had perfect dirt and a big old grader, we can like crown the road to do everything that we wanted to do. Problem is, we don't have the perfect dirt out here. You start to dig into this stuff, you start bringing up rock after rock after rock. That's not good to grade with. So we have to bring in a ton of dirt, which is a giant process and very expensive and very time consuming. Before we ever moved in, James and them actually made this road as nice as it is. Apparently it used to be a little single lane road. You couldn't even pass. Uh, so they put in a ton of work to make it as nice as it is. So I'm trying to do my part in keeping it maintained, making little tweaks on the road to uh, hopefully make everybody's experience out here better coming down the road. Those are really the only trouble spots on the road. This part that, uh, me and James brought in a bunch of dirt and filled in and fixed that used to be a slip and slide, held up really, really well. There is another road, however, a little shortcut road down into our valley that I take. It's the best way to get in and out of here with big trailers and that road is demolished. So we will be doing another video. It's a pretty big project. I think I'm gonna attack it by myself. Uh, to try and get that road fixed, but it's long overdue. So that'll be a whole separate video on, on figuring that road out. But for now, I'm just gonna go to the end of this road, we're back to the ranch, let's go see how uh, the rest of the ranch is handling everything. I wanna apologize now, I know this is a lot of in-cab tractor footage, it's probably not the most exciting video, but it's the easiest way to give you guys an update without getting drenched and the camera getting drenched. I'm going somewhere now that I haven't actually gone to, and that is, again, there's a driveway following these little finger rivers 
Uh, from the back property right there, you can see my fence line. That back property is obviously much higher than my property. So it all drains to these lower sections where you see where the fence dips down. There's two of those on the property. There's one there, there's one over there. If you guys go way back in the YouTubes when we bought this place, this side over here, I think this is actually where we built the step up for the 110s. Obviously that is long gone, but we don't really do much with this side of the property anymore. It was fun for a while with the 110 track. We need to at some point build a really big dirt bike track here. That's my plan. So following this stream, I'm hoping we don't get stuck. Actually, we should probably put her in four wheel drive because it's probably gonna get pretty sandy and mushy up here. There's the 110 track, or what used to be the 110 track. That area looks like quicksand, but that's all the sediment that washes down. That's what collects down by the driveway. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot here, but I want it all to kind of make sense to you guys that are watching and obviously not standing right here with me. That goes through there. I can see there's a decent amount of water flowing through it. Of course, now that I'm filming, I was hoping to film like a bunch of rain and craziness, but we're not getting that right now. But I checked the weather radar and it looks like later on this afternoon, we're gonna get a bunch of it, but it's probably gonna be too dark to film. All right, so we're gonna try to not fall down this hill in the tractor and I'm gonna go walk down there. Now the views here are always awesome, but after a rainstorm, it's just everything is so clear. But anyways, coming down here, you can see uh, there is no longer a passable road here with the way this is washed out. That's probably about two feet deep or so. And again, that's coming from this back property. There's a big stream bed that runs all the way through here. You can actually hear the water. I'm assuming at the bottom of this, it's that real hard, uh, it's like a DG, but it's so compacted. It's almost like a rock. Yeah, that, that's what that stuff is right there. I actually got a couple of concrete culvert pipes from James that I think I'm gonna put in here to let the water pass, but then we can put dirt back on top. Again, before all of this property burned, I mean, our property burned too, but before all of this burned, there was a lot of vegetation to slow the water down. And we're only three years in since the big fire came through, and this place hadn't burned, I don't know, for 40 years before that or more. So it's got a lot of making up to do to have enough vegetation back there to slow the water down and stop giving us erosion issues on our property. I mean, we're never going to get rid of them fully, but uh, that'll help out a lot. Plus doing things like putting concrete culvert pipes down there will help out a lot as well. We're coming up on the next one and maybe from this angle you can see just how steep these uh, down slopes are, which again, they match the property behind us is like natural drainage. That's why this road just kind of follows that. I think we'll get stuck on this one, but let's find out. Let's go down. If we do, we can always turn out and go out that way. Oh yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good. This one's just got a little bit of water trickling through it right there on out that way in that natural stream. Check the pool out, y'all. Now, first of all, uh, it's not 100% done, but I did find my multi-tool and uh, the, pretty, the pool deck is pretty much done now. I've put the edge banding on it. I still got to finish off all of the screwing of it, but deck's looking pretty much complete. Uh, but check out the pool level. This is like super tall. Uh, so they have these reliefs in the corner where the water can actually get out once it goes up too high and uh yeah the water's definitely been draining out of this thing the water level is so freaking high let's go look down here we'll go through our trap door don't mind the bowling pins down up under here and uh that's a lot of pressure on her a lot of water a lot of water but the good news is it's not flooded down here because it's sitting on a bunch of sand like really nice sand that drains really well and again like the rest of the property so we cut this into a hillside you can see obviously we are lower than over there but on this side we're actually higher so again everything drains out that way and flows through the property so even if the pool like super overflowed we're not gonna have a bunch of water pooling up underneath it it all drains out that way Whew, that next wave might be coming quicker than i thought it's starting to get really really cold and windy we are now in one of probably the nicer parts of the ranch that is this tree lined area we've done a lot of work in here this is actually where papa rhino thought he saw a monkey bouncing in the trees and yeah that, that was an interesting couple of days but one thing i've noticed that's new and maybe i just it was never as pronounced but you'll see this stream running through here that runs out right out there's where that concrete was in the road that we talked about where the water crosses this comes down from here if you hark in way back when we got dead x jeep oven running out here we actually took it through this like goalie that's in the center of the prop walk through here i don't trust walking under this big old widow maker tree you, you just stay there don't fall crazy how much this area got cleared out we did a ton of work in here Again, I don't know what poison oak looks like. I don't think we have any on the property, but what the heck do I know? Just being careful while we walk. But you can see there's a V right there, and that goes all the way to where the gravel driveway is that comes into the house. So basically everything that I tell you that like drains this way, some usually ends up in that goalie. 
slowly kind of disperses into the ground, trickles its way out here, and then back out to the road that away. But that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, I know it's a short video. I was hoping the storm would kick up and get some really cool footage. You know, it's, it's really not. I just checked the radar again. It says now it's coming even later than I anticipated. So I don't think we're going to get some big rain footage. As I say that, it's actually just picking up right now. It's actually picking up pretty good. All right, hey, maybe, maybe we're going to get some good rain footage. You guys hear that? There's Mother Nature making me a dang old liar. Uh, a lot of you guys wanted ranch updates, so that's where it's been. I mean, we just had rainstorms the last couple of weeks. In terms of progress on ranch project, for the custom modern shed project, I've got the windows ordered. Uh, I'm hoping those get here in the next couple of days. And then once I get a dry day, I can get the windows installed. Then we got stucco, then we got roofing, and then we get to finish out the interior and make that thing look just freaking awesome. And the rain is actually really picking up. All right, let's jump back in the tractor, head back to the house. Well, quick pit stop before we get back to the house, because I know a lot of you guys are going to wonder about the donkeys. They're out here just in, well, I don't know if they're enjoying life in the rain, but they're out here eating, hiding under like the lowest tree for some reason, but this one they can reach all the leaves to eat. It is great having the house fenced off, otherwise these guys would be just pooping all over my patio right now. They do have the covered animal stalls so they can go up underneath. For the most part, they just go hang out up underneath trees while it's raining. Get a nice little snack. You can see him down there chomping away. Willie probably saw that some hay got thrown up at the animal stalls, so he's probably up there with Big Walt eating. Oh, it's coming down good now. Oh, get out of the rain, get out of the rain. Jeez, that's a little loud in here hitting this old metal roof, but I thought we'd find Willie up here. He is not up here. However, we do have Big Walt. What's up, buddy? You're the smartest one, huh? You know, you come out here, hang out up underneath the roof, get out of the rain. Yeah, you're a good boy, Big Walt. You're a good boy. Stay dry, all right, buddy? Stay dry. And then we've got the goats put up for the night. Yeah, this rain just kind of turned into no joke. Totally just made me eat my words about the storm not hitting, or the next wave of the storm not hitting. Hi, right, guys. Well, we'll see how we weather this. I uh, appreciate all of you guys that reach out anytime something's happening nearby the ranch. You guys are awesome. But with that, we're going to wrap up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforwardapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you got to be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn.